What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to use the add-on random flow in order to create a sci-fi style room in Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Random Flow is a Blender add-on specifically designed to help you quickly do hard surface randomization inside of Blender. So it's got tools inside of it for doing random extrusions and random panels and things that really kind of fit in like sci-fi style modeling. And so the developer um, puts out a lot of videos on his Twitter feed where he kind of shows what his add-ons are capable of. And he's got this he's got this great video where he creates kind of a sci-fi paneled room. So I thought we could do something kind of like this. Um, I'm not going to be nearly as good at it as he is, but we can go ahead and we can see what we can create. So. First thing is we want to jump over into Blender right here and we want to start by creating a room. And so all I've done in this case is I've just taken a cube like this one and then I've basically come in here and I've deleted out um, one vertex on the corner in edit mode so that this looks more like a room. All right, so make sure that you have random flow installed and enabled and then you should be able to activate it by hitting a shift Q on your keyboard. Notice how when you do a shift Q on your keyboard, it's going to give you um, some different tools that you can use in order to do different things. Now, right now, though, notice how nothing is happening. So the reason why nothing is happening is first, we need to tab into edit mode and we need to select some faces. So in this case, I'm just going to select all three of these faces in edit mode and then I'll just hit tab again to jump back into object mode and we'll do a shift Q. We can do a random extrude and notice how when I click on these right here, this is going to start adding detail, but we have a problem. And the problem is that these are getting placed on the outside of our shape. And that's because the normals are facing outside. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tab back into edit mode and we're just going to go to so we're just going to go to mesh normals and we're going to flip the normals so they're facing towards us. And we can see that by going over to the normals right here and you can see how now these are facing up towards the camera. All right, so now we're just going to do a shift Q. We're going to do a random extrude and I'm just going to click on a one, maybe a two. We're going to do a shift click for the two in here as well. And so notice how we can adjust the depth at which these are created, but there's really not a whole lot going on right now, right? It's not really creating a whole lot of panels. The reason for that is at the moment, there's not really enough geometric detail in here to do anything with this. So what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete these out. I'm going to jump into solid mode, but what I want to do is I just want to tab into edit mode and I just want to select all these faces, right click and do a subdivide. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subdivide this maybe by, we're going to go ahead and do it by 10 right here. So now we've got a lot more geometry in here and I might actually tap the A key, right click and subdivide it again so that we've got more detail that looks kind of like this. So now we've got some detail to work with. First thing we want to do is we want to add some random extrusions to these walls. So to do that, I'm just going to tab into edit mode again. And so now I'm just going to tap the A key to select everything. Then we're just going to tab back out of edit mode. All right, so now we're going to do a shift Q and do a random extrude. And we're just going to select this first option. So notice how this first option is going to come in here and it's going to do kind of a larger extrusion in here. So notice how it's creating these panels on the wall. And this is kind of where we want to start is we want to start with a larger panel right here. And you can adjust the number of faces by using this slider right here. So if you enter a value of 10, it's creating fewer faces. If you enter a value of 100, then you can see how it's just creating like a big face in here. So we're gonna stay at about 50 for right now. I think that's gonna leave us where we wanna be. Notice how you can adjust the random seed in here um, by clicking and adjusting the seed value right here. And so one thing to note about this is you can also adjust the depth of the extrusion that's created using this slider down below. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it to maybe like 0 0.01, but you can do some interesting things with the bigger value as well. But I'm gonna leave this at 0 0.01 for right now. Well, now we wanna add a second subdivision in here. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna do a shift click on this two, and that's just gonna come in here and subdivide this. The first thing you're gonna notice when you do this, and I've struggled with this a little bit, um, is notice how this is coming through and it's creating a bunch of subdivisions for the different boxes. And if it looks very clunky, right? So what we wanna do in order to fix that is we wanna come down and we wanna check the box for individual panel size. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give us a little window over here where we can control the size of the loops 
that are created. Notice how when we do this, and I set this to a value of like 5%, then this is gonna give us a lot better result. If we were to set it to like 1%, notice how you're gonna get a bunch of smaller values. If you set it to 0%, then we're gonna be back to kind of where we were before. So in this case, I think a value of 5% is probably gonna be good. And so again, notice how that's just adding a second level of depth in here. And notice how you can adjust the depth of the different levels using this slider right here. So if I was to put this to like 0.25 or something like that, those are gonna be way deeper. Um, in this case, I like it at 0 0.05. So we're gonna leave it here like this. And then if you wanted to, you could add a third loop object right here. So you could do a shift click in order to add that, add some smaller details in here. And so again, I'm gonna set this loop panel size to maybe like 1% for this one. And we're gonna adjust the seed couple times just to see what this creates. And I think this is probably gonna be pretty good. So notice how this came in here and this added that detail really easily where we've got like multiple levels of, um, of detail being added in here. And so I feel like we've got some pretty good paneling in here. This is really good for adding that random paneling. Now let's go back and let's add some background paneling on the walls. So we want this to look like this is made up of like individual plates or something like that, rather than um, being made up of these extrusions. Like we want these extrusions to look like they were bolted on. So the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything selected for right now and we'll try this, but I'm just gonna do a shift Q. And instead of doing a random extrude, we're gonna do a random panels. And so a random panels is gonna come in here and it's going to adjust the number of panels that are created on the wall rather than extruding them out. And in this case, notice how you can't see anything. That's because your panel amount is set to 100%. And so we're just gonna drag that down a little bit well, notice how when we drag that down, we start getting these random panels created on our wall. And this one I think is a little bit more intuitive to use than the extrude. You can come in here and just kind of mess around with the panel size that's on here. Notice if I set that to 0%, it's just gonna panelize everything. We don't wanna do that, but what we can do is we can kind of play around with this a little bit. So in this case, I'm gonna put this at maybe like 5%. And then we can also adjust the panel seed to adjust that random panelization look on the wall like this. You could add some subdivision and some other things in here. I don't think I really want to do that. So we're just going to leave that alone, put it back at zero. Um, but let's go ahead and go with this one right here. I think that gives us a pretty good look. So now what we've got is we've got a wall in here that has both panels on it as well as random extrusions. And if we wanted to, we could come in here and select like this panel and tab into it. And then let's say we wanted to add some additional detail, maybe on our wall like this. You could select some random areas, tab back into object mode, then just do a shift Q and do some random extrusions in there as well. So notice how we're getting some kind of like random paneling in those areas that I selected. So that can be a good way to add a little additional detail. Notice how I can adjust the height if we decide that we wanna do that by adjusting the minimum depth. And then finally, let's say we wanna add some random piping in here, right? Because what's a sci-fi room without piping? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and we're gonna select our original cube like this. And what you might wanna do is you might wanna toggle some of these off just for a minute, just so you can see what you're selecting. But I'm just gonna select some random areas in here. And then we can go ahead and toggle these back on. But now I'm gonna tab back into object mode, and this time I'm gonna do a shift Q, and I'm gonna add random tubes. So what random tubes is going to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the amount in here. Random tubes is gonna add some random tubes to your random selection. So notice how what I can do is I can come in here, I can adjust the number up or down. And I can also adjust things like the length, which is going to give me longer tubes and things like the bevel of the curve. So for example, these are way too big. So I just wanna bring the depth way down to maybe something like this. So now we've got a depth of like 0 0.01. And you can also adjust the width of that bevel to make these either kind of like sharp where they turn or not. So there's a lot of things we can kind of play around with in here, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, we'll go ahead and set this 
We'll leave it at 51, and I'm just gonna adjust the seed so that I can look at some of these different paneling options. And so that value might be a little bit big. Maybe we'll bring it down to like 25. So notice how if you have too many pipes, then um, it just kind of does some random weird things in here. So you just want to kind of play around with these settings a little bit. So, but you could adjust the length so that they're longer or shorter, as well as the offset, which is going to set how far off of the wall these go. And so let's say we wanted to add just a little more detail. So I'm going to select maybe, we'll go with this panel right here. And what I want to do is I want to break a couple of these panels up so that they've just got a little bit more detail on them. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm inside of edit mode and I'm just gonna do a shift Q. I'm gonna do a quad slice. And in this case, I'm gonna select the option for tangent. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to basically slice this up into some more detail like this. So we could set this so that it was rotated or not. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me more detail in here. So now I could select some additional faces. So then we can either do another random extrude in order to get some more detail on those faces. So something like that. Or we could also do a shift Q and just add some more random tubes in here. So we're gonna bring the value down on this one right here. But we could use this in order to quickly add some tubes on these faces as well. So. Everything in this add-on is designed to really quickly, to let you really quickly and like iteratively design this stuff. The other thing that's cool is you can also come in here and delete any of these that you've created. So if you don't like the way that it looks, you can just delete it and run it again. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what other kinds of random flow tutorials you'd like to see. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you're interested in random flow, I will link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.